Guess, hello, guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is, hi, Fem Fam. Um, I'm so, welcome back. We're, we're trying to pronounce our guest last name. We love her. She's going to hear this and just die. Um, Mandy Bardisbanian. Bardisbanian. Why did you I love say you. it in an accent? Don't hate me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But uh, we were just going with Mandy Bardi. Um, <laughs> Mandy B, for short. That's what I told her. I'm going to start calling her anyways. But uh, guys, this interview, you're going to love it because not only do we break grounds on costume designing, what the whole process looks like, but Mandy is just someone who has worked in multiple different types of industries and has like used her set skills to now position her to start from the ground up as a costume designer. Um, I met her on the set of The Company You Keep, um, which was an amazing experience. And I immediately was like, we need her for sync. <laughs> so um, it just her, her professionalism and her like, of course, her talent, her eye to detail, that all speaks for itself. But that just shows, you know, you don't need <laughs> to be someone who feels like they have to have a lot of credits to start working. You know, you can work now. And we go into that. Um, she just has such an inspirational backstory too. Um, I literally can go on about this girl. Yeah. So she's fabulous. We're so excited to work with her on Sync, our feature film. And, and guys, you're meeting her for the first time. So am I. This is actually the first time <laughs> I get to talk to her. Carolina's just told me all about her. So I was super excited to get to meet her and to get to hear her her approach to things and I cannot wait to see her designs because just after this conversation I'm already excited yes she is amazing so you guys will love it because we love her and we love you <laughs> and we love you fam so enjoy Yeah, listeners, this is so exciting. I'm having uh, Mandy, who I worked with on a short film, The Company We Keep. And shout out to Sushi and the whole team on that, who brought such an amazing, talented crew together. We were so blessed. Like, everyone, it's the kind of team where everyone just wants to do more and is just on it. So, yeah, I was, when uh, Mandy was brought in, I was just so floored by her talent, by her professionalism, by just everything she was bringing. So Manny, um, she was the costume designer. And um, yeah, I before we go into what I like saw that you brought to the table, which was a floored, beautiful deck, um, and just all the details about what you did, because I, I don't even care what the book says that a costume designer should do like what the protocol is i don't give a shit about i that. like the book because... like there's this <laughs> mystical book of the film rules <laughs> exactly because everyone like you know feels like there is a book yeah. on everything and there is a way you know quote unquote short there is professional and like probably yes a professional route to go what about doing certain things but I think the level and care that in which you handled um, the costumes on that project just made me so excited to work with you because I'm like, I don't even know what it is that y'all do, but I like that and I want to work with that, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So why don't you go into your background because you were able to share that with me on set a bit and I was just like, I love this girl. <laughs> she comes from <laughs> such an awesome background. To be quite honest, I had no idea what the hell I was doing on the short film. It was my very first uh, time ever costume designing for an actual set. So I had no clue what the, the, the book said to do <laughs> yeah. um, on, on anything to do with costume design. So I just, I just did the most um, and maybe- Oh, actually, sorry. I'm going to cut you off already. I'm being rude. Please, please. Um, Tell everyone how you even approach Sushi, our producer, writer of the film, because I thought that was so brilliant. And again, just speaks to your like 
your nature to want to be very proactive with your career. So okay, just, well, just plug mean, that thank, in. Again, thank you so much. Because yeah, you know, this is something that I tell all my interns um, all the time is if you want something, you have to ask for it. Mm -hmm. uh, no one is going to know that you want something unless you physically tell them, right? Yes. So with, uh, with Sushi and, and how I got onto the company we keep is I saw them on an Indiegogo campaign. They were, uh, they were doing crowdfunding for, uh, to fund the production of the film. And I saw it and I was like, Ooh, a gay short film. I am so down. <laughs> and I just, I, found, um, I went onto the campaign and I found uh, contact information and I just contacted them. And I said, look, I have zero experience, but here is my background. Mm -hmm. Would you, uh, would you mind if you, you know, taking me on for this and giving me a shot? And, uh, Sushi did. And I'm forever grateful for that because I absolutely adored that entire experience. And like you said, the, the entire cast and crew literally could not have been the nicer, like the nicer people mm -hmm. in the world to work with. So that was a huge treat. I, I do, I told you before, and I, I will say it again, y'all ruined me uh, for <laughs> all future sets in my life because there's no way that I'm ever going to have a uh, cast and crew around me that are going to be that perfect. But, um, but yeah, it was an incredible experience. So uh, my background was something you asked. So um, speaking of, of telling people what you want, um, this is a very long story. So I'm not going to tell all of it. I'm going to give you the very short version. Okay. Basically what happened was I graduated from college and I moved to LA with nothing to my name. Uh, I had no job, I had no place to live, nothing. And the first night I, I got here, I met these like three guys at a bar uh, who were in a, in a metal band that <laughs> said, oh, you don't have a place to live? And I'm like, no, I'm just gonna stay in my car for a while. And they were like, well, come stay with us. So I lived with like three guys in a month <laughs> for a month, terrible. Uh, it was disgusting actually. Um, <laughs> and um, I, I knew I wanted to work for Hot Topic. So I, you know, because the Hot Topic headquarters is about 30 minutes outside of the city. So I, I kept applying for jobs online, but never getting any kind of response back. Um, about a month into living here, I, um, I was on literally my last like 20 bucks. And I knew I was going to have to like move home if I didn't get a job somewhere. So um, I'm going to cut out one part of the story because it just makes it really long. But basically, I found the corporate office address um, on Google. And I just drove to the Hot Topic corporate office and I walked into the lobby and I said, I cannot leave here without a job. I have to work here. I love that. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> Holy and, shit. <laughs> yeah. um, it was, there's a whole, again, there's a whole other part to this and I've said it on another podcast, but anyway, it's um, it, basically the office services manager who is like my second mom, her name's Lisa. She, um, she hired me as a receptionist for the Hot Topic corporate office. And um, then after about a year uh, being in office services, I, um, I got my first job in the buying department as a junior's licensed apparel assistant buyer mm -hmm. um, and worked my way up from there. So my, my career is really with big box retail. Um, and that's where I, I was born and bred, if you will where I learned everything. Um, I had a very interesting career where I, a very lucky career, um, where I, I was moved around to different departments. So I was able to work in apparel, in um, novelty accessories, collectibles, beauty, jewelry, socks, uh, bags. It was like, I was able to kind of, you know, um, venture into all these different categories, which each one teaches you completely new sets of skills um because they're completely different departments and industries obviously mm -hmm. um and then not only that but I you know because of that I was able to have um every single incredible mentor at Hot Topic you know manage me and I was able to learn from each of them individually you know one of them taught me how to design product one of them taught me how to dive into the numbers you know one of them taught me how to um how to uh, I actually, it's kind of interesting. She, she was really the one that, that kind of brought me from being like this, like eager little kid to being a professional. Like she actually took me shopping and she's like, what do you want your look to be? Mm -hmm. Like, and I was mm. like, body suits. That's mm. what my look is. <laughs> uh, anyway, and like, you know, she, so she taught me how to like, you know, speak more eloquently in meetings. And it, it was, it was a really mm -hmm. unique, uh, journey through, through that, uh, that amazing company. And I it could never be more thankful. Uh, it's still my home. Um, and after that I got into, uh, to startup 
world. <laughs> so now I am a VP of licensing and merchandising for uh, Legion M Entertainment, which is a startup entertainment company um, studio. And I do anything and everything to do with merchandising. So it's, it's really a, um, it, you know, it, it relates to costume design in a certain way, but it's, it's, I'm literally starting from the ground up. I have never worked under a costume designer. I want to so badly <laughs> uh, so I can learn all the ins and outs, but um, I feel like maybe I have a little bit of an advantage starting out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it makes sense. Like when Carolina told me like, oh yeah, she used to work for Hot Topic and like the internals there and everything. Like it makes sense to go from retail to costumes. Like, yes, it's different sets of skills, but it relates to each other. You understand how clothing works. You understand how like you get the sales and prices of merchandise and clothing. So yes, that's sales, but then that you understand how to budget with that, you know? And so it just, it's all different, but it all relates enough that it totally makes sense to be one with the other, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I love, here's, here's something interesting. So my, my, one of my mentors at Hot Topic, I, you know, I always wanted to be, you know, the, the leader, <laughs> uh, cause that's just the way that my, my brain works. Nothing is ever, is ever big enough. Um, and, and I, you know, she always told me, she's like, look, you know, you're, you love product though. She was like, you, you're really good at designing product and mm. the higher you get in the ranks, the less you're going to be touching product. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I never really understood that until now, you know, now I still design product, but not as, um, it's not like my everyday life anymore. Right. right? Like a much more high level of like, you know, meetings and, and allocations and looking at, you know, at all those other like bigger picture things um, that, that I don't touch product as much. And when I was on set, uh, you know, on, on the company we keep, it was, it, it was a return to the creative, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and that it felt so good to, to uh -huh. be back and to have that creative moment and be able to, um, to be physically, doing the manual labor of of creating something mm -hmm. right like in front of you and, totally. and that's that i've missed for sure yeah and it's you know that speaks volumes about you because certain people like are in the entertainment field for the money and it's like yes you still have to have some kind of artistic drive to even be in this at all but then there's <laughs> also the people that are like i just want to create and it's like, yes, of course, we all need money. We all like we can't we don't do this for free. We can't. We wouldn't be able to survive. But like, you know, the people that really just want to be hands on and create like that's that's amazing that that speaks volumes about you and that you should be doing this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing feels better than seeing something complete that you create mm -hmm. from scratch, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know y'all can relate. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, that's like how it is with acting and, and creating film writing. It's, we rarely get to like those moments where we're actually physically doing the thing we love are kind of, they're just short lived. Yeah. They, you know, we live, we prep for months, you know, doing all the pre-production work and stuff. And then that moment on set, like even for the company you keep, we're like, this is only two days. <laughs> it's done now. <laughs> Which again is rare for being on set and <laughs> for everyone who knows, like, you know, to want to like prolong production, but it's, it's because we all were like, had worked up to the point and we were all enjoying like finally doing the creating aspect that, you know, living in it or seeing it. So it, it, it's hard. It's hard to, um, I think, no, I shouldn't say it's hard. I would say that that is what I think drives us to keep fighting for those moments and having those moments of creating because it is a lot of work to lead up to that yeah. and yeah even with in costume designing it's just like or what you are trying to build with your career like you're you still don't want to give up all the experience and work you have with merchandising but how do you now couple that and that means more work for you <laughs> to like you know build up to that but I also from what I'm hearing everyone's super supportive of and this is what, you know, why you try to be the best employee wherever you're at. Like, you know, we all can still have, you know, our quote unquote day jobs and do well with our creative careers. So I think you've found a way for them to be very supportive too of you um, from what I heard. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, I, I am very lucky in that way that um, that the company that I work for now, Legion M, is very supportive of, um, 
of extracurricular projects. Uh, we all have some. Um, yeah, even our even our CEO like makes wine on <laughs> he has like a wine company on the side. It's like this whole thing. Because uh, they're I mean they're just entrepreneurs like crazy right. entrepreneurs. They actually side note uh, the our two co-founders they were the first people to ever put live TV on cell phones back when we had oh, like flip phones and like razors and stuff. It was like crazy. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my god. We have Emmys for it. It's a whole thing. Um, they. <laughs> they're like complete innovators. And so they understand that like, we also need like other creative outlets and things like that. Um, and also it being a startup company that definitely helps, right? Because right. there's just more flexibility. Like we don't have set hours. We all just work 14 hours a day and that's just is what it is. <laughs> but, um, you know, and then of course, if we need to take a day or a week or whatever, then then we can do that because we work so hard, you know, for the company regardless. Yeah. Um, right. And that's something that I, you know, wouldn't be able to do if I was back in corporate retail or, you know, at a larger studio, um, at a more corporate studio. You know, of course there would be conflicts of interest and there would be, um, you know, non-competes and there would be all kinds of things. But um, because of because of this amazing startup world, I have that ability um, and, and I'm pretty thankful for that. It's, it's yes, sometimes I do miss uh, the corporate aspect of things and the ladder, you know, yeah. the, the ladder is something that I definitely miss as far as like, okay, there's a clear path mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. next step, right? <laughs> or, okay, I have to do these things and then I'll get this promotion or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. And, right. and it's, it's fascinating um, coming into film a little bit more now there's no ladder. Like, <laughs> so can y'all tell me, about, that's my question for y'all yeah. is like, okay, like, okay. So for example, right? Like whenever I got it, the receptionist job at Hot Topic, mm -hmm. okay, cool. I'm a receptionist now. I can like show how hard I'm going to work and how passionate I am. And then I'm going to be promoted to this. And then I'm going to be promoted to yep. this. There's no equivalent. So like whenever you're starting out in the film industry, what do you do? Honestly, I think it's just making your own stuff. And like, because, you know, if you are a PA and you want to be a director, it's like, you know, PA long enough to get that experience that you feel like, okay, I think I understand how this works. I'm going to try to pull it off on like, you know, low budget, short, whatever. Because as soon as you have something under your belt to show for yourself, like, hey, I accomplished this as a director, people will start taking you seriously. But you just have to have something. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be like sold or anything just to be able to say like, I know what I'm doing enough to pull it off, you know? So really, I think that's like the best way to do it is just start by creating something of your own and just doing it and jumping in because then people will want to bring you on for their stuff. And of course, Hell it's, yeah. you know, it's a slow rise for sure because people are going to be like, oh, well, I mean, like you don't have that much experience. So like we work for free for me and, you know, like you have to get there eventually. But I think that's the best way to start. Yeah. I was just going to say, you want to be a director, be a director. You want to be a producer, be a producer. So that exactly like taking, doing your own projects, you are giving yourself that power, that the work experience and, and empowering yourself to show others that, yeah, this is me. This is what I did. I built this. Like Mandy, you as a costume designer, like, you know, showing what you did in, in the last film, you, you already are that, you know, you've taken the steps, you have... And of course, you know, again, like what Tessa's saying, yes, like some people will be like, okay, like maybe you're not experienced enough, but they'll work out a deal with you if they like you, mm -hmm. you know? It's again, also too about, I feel like um, people wanting to hire people because that's how I, I think at the end of the day, like I'd rather take someone with not that much experience, but I know is like gonna fucking kill it. Yeah. Like I'd rather like take a chance on that person. So I think... Um, yeah, that I just learned that too, because I, I struggled with that. Like this past whole year, that has been a learning experience for me. Um, wanting to, you know, having, it takes a long time to do a feature film. So I'm like, okay, I want to get on set. And that's why I contacted Sushi myself. Like I, I went from the UPM to then associate producing because she saw I was like capable of doing more. Um so it's just like show, also showing up your like who you are on set and your strengths mm -hmm. and knowing that you don't have to stay in a PA if you aren't really like I've really not done any PA -ing ever. So so then people could be like, okay, that's like fucked. Like what how did you not start and now you're producing? No, that that doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. 
you know? So, and can't, and I've like worked on other like really hard skills too, to like allow me to manage like a team or, you know, whatever it is. So I think it's, yeah, just going out and just doing what you wanted it, what it is that you want to do. And like, I think that's great that like, I'm so excited to work with you on our film because I know too, that's going to give you more ownership too of your work and like what you want. Are you want. allowed to mention that? Yeah. Because Fuck I yeah. And I cannot say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, so guys, like <laughs> Manny is going to be our costume designer and that's also why we brought her on. I am so, so floored. Um, Let's talk about like your process with the with the fam because I'm I'm here for it and like we had a meeting already on like what it is the outline so let's like break it down because I love it I think this is like what people should do you know have a meeting you read my script so let me cover that like of course Mandy read my script she saw the pitch deck she herself is interested yay <laughs> <laughs> um what um what then happens next. Let's like explain that to the the fam. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, okay, I what, I'm, blah, blah, blah. what I will say first is that um, what I'm noticing already is that every film is super different, right? As far as like what the process needs to look like, um, because like for example, on the short that we worked on, that was all like there was literally zero budget for mm -hmm. wardrobe. Um, and so I had to pull from closets and I had to, uh, do like some, you know, some treasure hunting basically to find pieces. And it was also set, you know, real world. So it was, um, it was very like normal everyday outfits that you would just wear, but right. I, I wanted to incorporate symbolism. Like I've always been, even like when I was in college and like designing, um, like seasonal collections, quote unquote, that I called them uh, back then. They they weren't. They were just <laughs> here's a photo shoot. Let's make a bunch of stuff and shoot it. Um, but uh, whenever I was doing that, like I, I'm really into symbolism, so I wanted to make sure that like I kind of made that like a staple as far as um, incorporating that into like everything that I do going forward. Is um, is there's at least one thing on every character that is um, that if you really like dive into it or like you know someday the YouTube videos of like Mandy Barnes Bannon's costume design. Here's like a, a recap of everything you missed yes. on her costume. Right? <laughs> and yes. uh, so anyway, it was, you know, that was really interesting. And then with, um, with y'all's film that I'm so excited to do, um, that I'm going to have to do a lot more um, actual construction and, and, you know, creating garments from scratch. So the process is going to be a little bit different from those two but basically I start out with what's the inspiration right like mm -hmm. let's actually pull visuals for what this is going to look like um so that really includes a ton of like color exploration and um and trend exploration really like, like literally pulling images together putting them on a you know powerpoint keynote whatever you work in um, I'm a PC and so you, uh, you know, throw them in there. And then once you have like your billions of images that you just pull from the internet, then organizing them, right. You might take some away. Right. You might add some more once you see it together, really like visually, what is your vision? Right. And then, um, and then pulling that together with, uh, with the director, producer, writers, everybody else, y'all, um, and saying, you know, what do you think? Like, here's where my head was at. I know we talked about it physically, but now it's like, now that we're seeing it, now right. we're the thoughts, right? Um, and, you know, what was a, a one step in there as well, and this is going to be easy because y'all are also the actors in this movie, um, but was what was interesting from the last time was I actually had one of the characters from the company we keep, um, I had her in my head as like a crystal wearing, like, like she's like, she would believe in zodiac signs and she would like follow her zodiac stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I had that down for her, but then when I was talking to the actors, um, one of the other actors like was like, oh no, that's, that's going to be for my character. Like that's like, I literally see her like having a thing of crystals on her nightstand. Like, and I'm like, okay, cool. Let's switch that over. Right. Cause then I, so mm -hmm. really about like also, you know, the actors too, like wh how do you see the character? You know, what do you see them wearing? And, um, the character exploration has been really interesting. It also starts from you know, how much money do they make? Because if they don't make a lot of money, then they're not their clothes aren't going to be as good, right? right? Such a um, key point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
um, you know, where did they grow up? Like, do they have, you know, if they grew up in Texas, maybe they have a little bit more of a casual feel or, you know, whatever. Right. Um, maybe they like, you know, boots more. Who mm-hmm. God, God knows. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, how old are they? You know, what's their, uh, what, re- what religion are they? Because like, if maybe, you know, if they grew up in a certain religious aspect and they still follow a little bit of that and they're going to be a little more modest or mm-hmm. maybe they are you know, rebellious from their religious time. So they want to be, you know, show more skin or whatever it is. Um, so all of that is really, really important to pulling together inspiration. And then uh, from there, once we have an inspiration nailed down, then you got to figure out, okay, how many, how many costumes or how many costume changes are there in the script and what is happening with that character in that part of the script, right? Like, are they mm-hmm. um, are they at home lounging? Mm-hmm. They or do they are they going to get coffee or are they going to a business meeting? Like, all of those things are going to be completely different, obviously. Yes, um, and you want to keep their style consistent because they are, you know, a human being. Um, sometimes, <laughs> so uh, so you want to make sure that everything you create for them um, flows, right? That it all makes sense for who they are because first impressions are really important, right? Like the first, like whether you believe it or not, the first thing that you're gonna, that you look at whenever you meet somebody is their appearance, mm-hmm. period. And, yep. you know, with a film, you're, you only have so much time to get to know this person, right? Like character development happens within what? Like the first 10 minutes. And so mm-hmm. the very first thing that the audience is seeing is realistically the costume design, Yeah. right? Like that's their yep. first impression of who this character is. So not only do you have to match everything, you know, perfectly for the aesthetics of the character and the film, blah, 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 but you also have to give the audience their first impression of who this person is, Mm -hmm. right? Tessa, I'm seriously digging Jambox. The fam needs to hear about their extensive music and sound effect library. I agree. Not only do they have a huge library created by Hollywood level composers, but you can search through it all based on criteria like genre and mood. Plus, they even have detailed stems you can use to create your own soundtracks from the elements they provide. You can literally be your own composer. 6,000 unique tracks and tens of thousands of stems, plus over 10,000 sound effects. Carolina, that's amazing. Oh, it gets better. They even gave us a discount code for our listeners. 10% off with Fem10. Connecting filmmakers with ridiculously good music and sound effects. Go and visit jambox.io and start leveling up your sound production. Exactly. Again, that's code Fem, F-E-M-M-E, 10 at jambox.io. Carolina and I are excited to talk to you, fam, about one of our newest sponsors. We are obsessed longtime users, which makes us extra excited for us to share with you, fam. So if you're into filmmaking, and really, why else would you be here? You've probably already heard of Celtix. Whether you're creating a feature film, short film, episodic series, video ad, or really any kind of video content, Celtics's video production tools can help you break and structure your story, write and edit your script, and manage every step of the pre-production and production process. You can guide story ideation with digital index cards, write your script using one of four script templates, set the visual direction for your project using the storyboard tool, break down your script quickly and easily with script asset tagging, Create daily shooting schedules, production calendars, and call sheets. Manage budgets and track costs. And do it all from a secure, cloud-based, and team-focused online studio. Head to Celtics.com, that's C-E-L-T-X dot com, to create your free two-project Celtics account. When you sign up, you'll get unlimited access to Celtics's full suite of tools for your first seven days. Celtics, the all-in-one solution for script writing and video production planning. Oh, yes. Well said. It's so, it's so fascinating because that's how we are, whether we want to admit it or not as humans, like when you meet someone, you instantly can just, you judge, like everyone judges everyone. Okay. There's no, you're not, no one's a savior here. So, so of course that happens on film and it says so much like you said within the first 10 minutes like we can instantly tell how much money they have what their current climate situations are you know where yeah where they're even located based on the way they're dressed like you know 
Absolutely. Um, okay, so then after we kind of figured out like the, <clears throat> here's how many we need, here's um, blah, blah, blah. Then we, uh, we get into the really fun stuff, which is either, um, you know, finding pieces and pulling everything together um, or creating from scratch. So especially for, um, for y'all's film, um, I will be creating from scratch. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm sketching first and I do like many, 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 many iterations of like pieces. And then, um, and then of course that will go into the decks next to the inspiration that we already built, right? And so we can make sure that um, that what we're designing actually matches the inspiration that we already agreed on, mm -hmm. right? Because that's right. super important. And then once we finalize the pieces basically with sketching um, and concept, then we're gonna go into, I have a pretty mannequin behind me. She does. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, draping is one of my um one of my like favorite things to do it's it's uh I'm definitely not amazing at it but it like it gets me there so what I'll do is I'll drape it's, it, there's this fabric called muslin um that is very very cheap and it's basically what you use to make patterns so I'll drape um on on Susie on my mannequin and then from there I'll make patterns for the garments um and then we'll start doing fittings and then once we have like the patterns down right then we'll actually start cutting fabric and um and constructing the garments um and then i'm sure there'll be like five more fittings after that to make sure it's right <laughs> because these garments are going to be highly constructed like it's gonna be right. a fun challenge for me <laughs> i'm so excited guys because she's she's already shown me some sketches um which you'll have to show tessa like when we wrap this because it, it, i'm so excited but just so you, uh, listeners, you you know, uh, you've already heard us talk about sync and it being, you know, site in the future. So we're really keeping a, like a minimal, um, highly constructed, but like, yes, yeah, still simple um, kind of kind of in the construction and, and the way the look is. So Mandy is just taking it to that next level and the, the way she's like, you know, envisioning the shapes and like the construction it, it's it's so cool i'm so excited <laughs> thank, you, thank you it's 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 a fun challenge for me because i um i you know back in college again when i used to make like random stuff it was um i was kind of known for like very high couture like stuff you could never actually wear you know in real life it was always <laughs> like it's like taking like this crazy like design work that i used to do that was just like literally throw everything at the wall and then create it this is much more of a of a definitely high couture, but simplified in its like most um, basic sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's gonna be really fun as, as like a challenge to like keep them really futuristic and interesting, but super simple. Yeah, exactly. And we're so fortunate too, because again, being on a low budget, micro budget film scale, using something like wardrobe and costumes and having, you know, you as an asset that will help enhance our world without, again, trying to throw special effects or, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like try to like really up the ante with like, we like having to reconstruct a building or something because you'll get the sense just by looking at our clothes. Okay. This is like the future time. Yeah. Like we get that. So that has made sense as an investment because in the cost of schemes, like, yeah, we don't have to now create a whole new set just to kind of sell that world more. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm really excited about that as well. That's what just excites me so much. Like it's, it's, it's a art form that is unlike anything else. Mm -hmm. costume design, Right. I mean, I, I love making, making products for, for retail. I do. I absolutely adore it. And you know, if my costume design career takes off, I will miss it. Like I will miss retail for sure. Um, as one example, I always tell people, you know, the, the moment that I realized that, that buying with and designing product for retail was like such a passion for me was um, we, I, I had just designed this eyeshadow palette. I was doing beauty and hot topic. And um, you guys remember those TV shows, Supernatural? Yeah. It's like two brothers that like, you know, fight demons, the whole thing. Um, <laughs> So sure, sure, sure. Uh, it's very popular with, I, I love it too, but it was very popular with, with like teen girls. Yeah. So um, I just designed this eyeshadow palette that was like, um, it was inspired by, by Supernatural. And these two girls come in, they were probably like 12, 13. And I was visiting a store at the time. Um, and they go over to the Supernatural section and they're like looking at everything. And then like one of them like picks up the eyeshadow palette and like opens it. 
And then they both look at each other and start like squealing at the top of their lungs <laughs> and up and down. And I was like, they will literally never know that that was me, but I will know how happy they were. Yeah. Yeah. Like that just made their day. And like, as weird as it sounds, like that's what product can do for us, right? It's just like make our freaking day. And um, as much as I hate consumerism, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, it's still there, you know, if you if you do the right kinds of products, of course, it just makes people happy. So I will yeah. always like love that. But cost mm-hmm. design is, is, a, is, a, is more creative in just other ways, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's in a way of like, of more creating about emotion than physicality. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like you're not physically holding anything, but you're you're emotionally connecting to this story and to this character in a bigger way because the costume is helping you understand it, right? Or helping you right. It. That's absolutely so why I want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> and there's so much that goes into it, like that you were mentioning before that I don't think most people think about you know it's like well not only do you want to show like the style of the film the time period the character style but like all those nuances of like well how much money do they make so what kind of clothes can they afford where do they come from so what are like all those little details that yeah like it does make such a huge difference on what you notice but like you don't think about that consciously yeah yeah yeah, that's what's like fun for your job and my job like Um, As a director, like when we were talking, it was just so fun to like delve deep into those psychological questions. Like I, you know, everyone knows on the show already, but I'll say it again, like Tess is playing our antagonist because she is a psycho. No, no, I'm kidding. Um, She's amazing. But, you know, that kind of person, I was, I made it clear. I'm like, she's not going to show skin. You know, she hides her like self and her secrets and her clothes and like, my character's used to being vulnerable and taken advantage of. So she does show skin and maybe she's confident, maybe she's not, but she's just used to being more open and vulnerable. So like, like things like that, just an example for our listeners, like that's like that kind of level of psychology that is so fun yeah. to play with, with the clothes and like how you tell the story. Mm-hmm. So we were like diving deep in that and it was great. <laughs> My favorite was the question you were like, where does Devin, uh, Tessa's character, shop? And I was just like, um, um, Uniqlo. Yes, Uniqlo. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's like practical. It's very like plain, <laughs> but like high end, you know, <laughs> it was so perfect. We were just laughing for like a good minute. I mean, like literally, and I was like, I was like, only, only a woman would have been able to answer that question so perfectly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes um and it's something that i i have noticed as well and i, I want to be very conscious of and something that i'm still learning quite honestly is um is working with talent because i obviously as the costumer you're touching people right and um i obviously you know naturally am a respectful human being but you know to I'm learning that it's really important to physically you know to actually say like um you know are you comfortable with me you know touching your arm are you, you know are, I'm going to I need to do this is that okay with you like things like that that are really interesting um and take, making sure you're taking care of the the talent as far as you know um is, is the talent comfortable with uh with showing skin like do they not want their stomach to show at all okay fine we don't have to do that right um, you know, are they okay walking in heels or, you know, it, it basically not taking them so out of their comfort zone personally, where it, it messes with their ability to, to do their job the yeah. best, right. And give their best performance. Um, so that's something that I'm still, uh, still learning and, and want to continue to, to grow on as well. Yeah, that's super important. I mean, it's important for the director, but it's also important. Yeah. For costumes, because that's something that like, the director might not even have, you know, like they might know they want this certain style for the character, but then they're like, all right, it's up to, up to wardrobe, you know? So yeah, yeah, something as simple as like, are you okay with your stomach showing or whatever, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, I love how consciously aware you are of that. And I think it's, you are already like a professional in that sense, but yeah, you're just going to learn as you work with more people and some people are going to be easy and communicative and others, maybe not. And 
that's like also an interesting thing when someone doesn't quite want to say what it is that's like mm-hmm. they're feeling that's those are the I found like as a director the the harder ones that you have to almost act on what you think they might not be saying sometimes and that gets yeah. really hard yeah um because it could be sensitive you know to them and like their comfort zones but yeah. um you know like really making sure and I love that you cared you you also asked me you know what I'm comfortable with and what I'm showing like in showing on camera because yeah like that could affect one's ability to act I love that you you yeah. took all of that into consideration and that's definitely worth mentioning in yeah, like, yeah. the job description I mean speak up <laughs> as talent speak up if you're not comfortable with something because something as simple mm-hmm. as like walking in heels not everybody's good at it you know and if that's what the wardrobe pulls for you and you have to walk down the street in this whole scene and you're gonna look like a horse like you don't want that to happen yeah. you know so just be honest and speak up yeah exactly you know I have um my I'm gonna I'm gonna mention it uh my wife has a a, a band mm-hmm. um yeah, <laughs> yeah. what's so, the name it's Where- called boy band boy with an I because they Love. are all androgynous queer people Love it. um and anyway so you know I I also am their side I'm their stylist I'm their manager and their stylist mm-hmm. And um, it is, you know, I've learned so much from them because of course, you know, when you're dealing with, um, with a group of people who have had, you know, dysphoria, like body dysphoria and things like that, it's, it's something that you have to be conscious of as right. far as, you know, constantly creating a safe space for that person to tell you things that they might be scared to tell you, right? Like, you have to you have to gain their confidence and their trust, but also make sure that you create that space um, where they feel comfortable with with telling you things that they might not otherwise. Yeah. Um, so you know, if someone is feeling you know particularly um, you know bodily dysphoric that day, then um, then you know they need to be able to tell you. And then okay, we're you know we won't put you in this. You know maybe we can switch this up and do this. Uh, does this make you feel more comfortable today? Or you know mm-hmm. it's it's little things like that that um, that you know, I'm just kind of learning as I go with this yeah. um, because yes, of course, the artistic vision of, you know, everybody involved is very important, but making sure that the talent can stay within that space for themselves to perform is, is also, you know, key. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And should be made. Yeah. It should be just as important. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, something else I wanted to point out too, is just, again, like, our listeners, we've said it over and I'm just going to keep beating it into everyone who's listening to this podcast is we're chatting with you still now what is like the early pre-production stage. And that is key because something you also pointed out at the end of our last meeting together was that it takes like three months to make these costumes, you know, like, okay, guys, if you just wait to like get your core team together at the last minute, you might not get the beautiful designs of whoever you're working with, or you're going to make them kill themselves, which I hate doing. Like, I'm not about that life, you know? So I just wanted to also point out in the time frame of things, how, again, it's awesome to, to start these conversations and like, get that going. So, you know, so yeah, like that was just something else I wanted to point out was the time frame of things. Yeah. yeah thank you for that. Um, <laughs> you know, being in the startup world, I am, I have had to adjust to last minute praise a lot and it's not how I, I like to work of course you know yeah, that's just, <laughs> it's it's a skill that you have to develop in the startup world to just yeah. and of course yeah. you're in film to just drop yeah. a role right um right. and you know a sense of urgency is <laughs> is um is, it's my biggest pet peeve honestly like if I have if I'm working with somebody or I have you know a, an employee or something that I'm, I'm managing that with no sense of urgency cannot handle it <laughs> biggest pet peeve of my life like do it get it done um I don't care if you have three days I want it done now because you have the time get it done so uh, (laughs) Tessa you see why I like her I can't can't sit still I literally was just talking about this yesterday with someone I was like I can't relax because I I don't have a project to be working on like I can relax and watch something on tv while I'm working on a marketing for a podcast or like whatever like I, I need to be productive or I it makes me anxious so I get it I love that we're gonna be great friends. I know I'm so excited for all of us <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, you know, I mean, basically like last minute, not my thing, but, um, you know, whenever I have to, I have to, but you know, lead time is important for certain departments, you know, certain departments just need more lead time than others. And especially when we have to make things from scratch, you know, I know that scared y'all at first and I was like, I'm going to make these things from scratch, but like, you, I mean, where else would I find this stuff? Like, I can't like, where the fuck are you going to pull this from? Because like, <laughs> even if we did go buy things, I mean, I'm sure I could find some of the wardrobe, you know, or I, I definitely can't say I can, I can find all of it. Cause I just, I won't, I wouldn't be able to, um, but you know, it would cost a lot more than even just making it from scratch. So really, yeah, you really opened our eyes uh, to yeah. that too. No, for sure. Yeah. Like, so that was cool. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, yeah. Cause if we did go buy stuff, it'd be like, you know, Zara and Uniqlo and like, it's just <laughs> not, <laughs> and we're going for, um, I won't, I won't spoiler it, but we are going for, for a certain uh, color scheme in this world mm -hmm. so you know Very that would excited. be incredibly impossible to find <laughs> um so yeah you know it's just the fact that I'm I'm gonna be making things from scratch and I'm gonna need the time um is very very important right so yeah yeah you know I mean before we even have a budget I'm I'm just I'm just getting started because why not yeah <laughs> it's worth it you know one thing I I, I always want to point out to out to all of my interns and anybody that is coming up in any industry is be freaking patient. That's like number one is be patient and, but be patient while working hard, right? Like yeah. that's two, that's two things that have to work simultaneously. But you know, um, one thing that I'm just, and people are saying this all the time, but I, I'm noticing it in real life. Like the younger generation right now, like the Gen Zers are really expecting to be here immediately mm, right. and we all started here and it's like okay but you also need to start here <laughs> like yeah. we all did too um and it's it's really frustrating like we all you know pe people said that about our generation but I'm seeing I, mean, I, I feel like I'm seeing it more in the younger generation mm -hmm. so it's just like really mm -hmm. frustrating to see like okay if, if you're not willing to start at the bottom then you're not going to go anywhere like, the, like period you have to start at the bottom yeah. and um and just be extremely good at the bottom like freaking kill the bottom because, <laughs> because then your people are going to see your potential to rise to the top. Right? Um, right. And so, you know, regardless of like the fact that I am, regardless of the fact that I am literally starting completely from the bottom in this brand new industry, like I'm, I'm treating it as such, right? Yes. My, the rest of my career has risen to a level that I'm very happy with and, you know, you know very thankful for. Um, regardless, I know that I'm starting from the bottom on this one. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting over. Like I'm treating this as if I am, I know nothing and, and just trying to work as hard as I can, as I did, you know, 15 years ago when I was starting the industry. And that's just, that's just what it is because yeah. that's what we have to do. That's what we should do. Right. We need to right. earn the, our, our place. And not only that, but as you keep earning it and as you keep like just doing stuff for free or, you know, do it, like, just creating things from scratch for no reason or whatever it is. Um, that's how you're going to continue to learn and be better at the job for the future. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. And that's how you will move up quickly. Like, again, I know like you are starting at the bottom, but you, like I said, the way you articulated yourself, like I, I am new, but you just like showed everything you got. I I'm like, she's not, she's not on the, bottom like I, I don't know well like you know like and I'm not just being nice okay like I'm a nice person we all know that but like I want to hire you like you know I want to be working with you well, even if you're starting from the bottom like you already had that level of skill and understanding and all of that you know so like there's a difference between somebody that's like I want to work mm -hmm. with costumes and they've never done anything with clothing at all versus like you do have that base so even though you're starting from the bottom as far as like I've never done this before professionally for a film, like you have that skill set already and that knowledge. So that's huge, you know, because yeah. it's like we were saying earlier, it's like, you just got to do it. And if you know what you're doing and you have that, you know, yeah. drive and determination and skill set and all of that, like people are going to see that immediately. It's going to, you know, speak exactly. So, you know, I'm sure you guys have said this on your podcast before, but I'm going to ask regardless. Um, my question for y'all is how the, do we get jobs in this industry? I'm like so confused by it. So like I am on like IMDb Pro and I'm like paying for that. 
and <laughs> I am like on backstage, which I realized after I joined backstage and I like, paid for it that like I'm not an actor, so I don't actually need them. <laughs> so no. And then, like, I looked on Craigslist yeah. for, like, it was, like, trying to search, like, costume design jobs. There was nothing. It was, like, a bunch of actor stuff, but, like, nothing. How do we get jobs? So, it's tough because it's, like, you know, for actors, there's a clear, like, you sign up for these things. That's where you submit for auditions. Totally easy. I mean, not easy, but, like, easy to figure out how to at least submit for the jobs. For everything else, it's difficult because there is no, like, clear path. Um... I'm finding there are a lot of databases. Um, there's Free the Bid, there's Stage 32, there's Alignable, which is kind of like LinkedIn. So there's all these databases, but again, it's like you're just putting your profile up there and then being able to contact other people. So kind of, I mean, the only way to really do it is to meet people and do it that way, like to start building that contact list and reaching out like you already have. Um, so the more people, cause it snowballs, you know, the more people you meet, of course, they're introducing you to other people, even if they can't introduce you to someone, at least maybe they can be like, oh, you should check out so-and-so. So that's yeah. when you then like go to these databases, find their contact information and whatever. That seems to be the only way I have figured out as like any sort of crew member to find work, but it is, it's a slow process too. Cause again, it's like, you have Ugh. to build that contact list and everything. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just will echo that. Yeah, that's again, like this whole year was like me trying to get more because I finally had more time to like and flexibility to try other gigs. And yeah, it is it is a it's a hard process. I found myself too. I'm like, Oh my god, like, I'm so willing to work. Like, where are these jobs? You know, that's what it feels like a lot of the time, you know. Um, but yeah, to piggyback on on Tessa, I think once you get like, you know, that one gig with sushi, now you're working with me. Now I know people, I'm going to refer you to that. And that takes fucking time. Yeah. But I like, honestly, that is the only way I feel like it truly starts to like work. And then of course, like that maybe sushi does another project or I do another project too. And then like we, and I, I don't think <laughs> there's anything wrong. You'll hear it on our show too. It's like, we tend to want to work with the same people that we love. Mm -hmm. um, especially when you build that power team, we all speak the same language. It's like, duh. And we all want to see each other rise up, you know, and like have a flourishing career yeah. and get you that, that Emmy or that Oscar for costume design. Like, <laughs> hell yeah. You know, yeah. so it's just like, we, I think all start to build on. That's what's so exciting about, like Tess and I wanting to do our first feature film too. It's like finding those arc team too that we're like, okay, cool. Like I would love to continue to work with this person again and again and like make beautiful things. Cause hopefully that snowballs our careers as well mm. as actors and filmmakers, like being able to show our talent. So it's just, it's, it's frustrating. Cause I wish it was something where like we could book jobs every day. And that's where I'm like, okay, I still need to find that extra side hustle that it's so exhausting <laughs> to do. I'm just being frank. Like it is, yeah. it is so tiring, but that's the hustle. Like that's where we just have, you have to keep doing it until you can like find that momentum. It, it just takes time. Yeah. Um, Mandy.com is another one for crew. I, I just wanted to also oh, put Mandy. that out. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, 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 hey, my. <laughs> Mandy.com. You need to check it out. Um, that's another place where you can see job postings and apply to. So you'll see specifically like the costume designer. What's really annoying is one of um one of Legion M's biggest films so far is is called Mandy. Um, it's a film with Nicolas Cage, which is absolutely utterly fantastic. It by is the way. such a trip. I, that movie was so <laughs> fun to watch. <laughs> if you're into like gory psychedelic thrillers, like yeah. it's the movie for you. Um, and, and I, I do a chiz ton of, uh, of licensing with this film. I, we just came out with a Funko Pop line. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> nice. Um, and thank you very much. Uh, so anyway, and actually really creepy. Um, and I'm going to show you real quick. I know you guys can't see it on the podcast, but I'm going to show you just to get, uh, these girls reactions whenever I show them the weirdest product I've ever made. Okay. Okay. the audience what you're looking at please <laughs> um okay so it's nicholas cage's head <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like 
bloody. He's covered up. in blood. He looks a little distressed. Yeah. This is a mask. Um, it, it is like sitting on. It's sitting on a display right now. Um, but it is a a literal mask made by this amazing FX artist named Rubber Larry. You can look him up on Instagram at Rubber Larry. He's absolutely insane. Nice. Um, <laughs> and he uh, anyway he created this Nicolas Cage mask and. Nicholas, I, I got a deal with Nicholas Cage uh, for his likeness rights mm-hmm. for the movie Mandy. Um, and he only let us do 30 of these. So oh. only 30 exist in the world. Um, and you or ever will. But anyway, so <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. My point is um, <laughs> the name Mandy is in my everyday life. But just for you and listeners, like, really try to have a conversation and get a sense of whomever you're working with. Yeah you know, why you want to continue working with the people that you love is also because there is a safety net there, right? And you like know and trust. And that's just one um, caveat, I would say, to to finding, you know, people on Facebook. Like Sushi was the most, like we were just talking, we cannot rave enough how blessed that set was because my next experience was the worst thing I've experienced in my life. So, um like yeah having to go to court y'all that's so fun <laughs> love because we deserve to get paid yeah so um one thing i do want to talk about and i'm sure you guys again i've talked about this on the podcast already but i you know since it's nightmares time i i just do want to like talk about that really quick like mm-hmm. are there any are there is there any advice that and there's this is a kind of a two-parter is there any advice that y'all have for someone like me who is brand new starting out here that um that one as a woman in this industry uh if there's any anything that we should just be aware of right as as women coming up in this mm-hmm. still male dominated industry um and second part is of course as crew um in a, in a general sense is there anything that we can do to advocate for ourselves in in those in that way so two-part question for y'all as advice to me and I mean, I think a big thing is don't be afraid to speak up because I think especially as women, we always feel like, you know, we don't want to rub people the wrong way and burn a bridge and blah, blah, blah. But like, yes, don't burn a bridge. Don't be an asshole. But like, speak up when something is wrong and when you don't feel like, you know, like, excuse me, Carolina's deal, what she's going through right now of like not getting paid on time. That's not okay. You know, it'd be one thing if Carolina was just like, well, when are we going to get paid? And there was no like deadline or whatever. Like, no, there was a hard deadline. She didn't pay up. That's something you need to speak up about. So just don't be afraid to speak up for what you deserve, you know, and, and your opinion, you know, like if you're head of wardrobe, like your opinion on the costumes matters, you know? So exactly. Yeah. Cause just, that's your role and your responsibility. Yeah, Exactly. And I had to find that I had to do that too, as well on this set. And what was frustrating too is I was like excited to work again with another woman in the industry. And I just feel like, you know, no, like women, male, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, anyone could, it's, it's also just, you know, the personality trait of like, do you actually care about your crew or you don't? And I feel like, um, this person was stuck with like an ego and director vision only and wanted to like not care about the safety and environment and time it takes to wrap things like and I felt like I was the only one fighting for those things on set with my producer who was also amazing so she was the only good thing that came out of this (laughs) I got to know her because she's she's a pro and like amazing but it was just frustrating because like I didn't have extra support from the other like team Mm -hmm. but the other crew that's the other thing they will respect and see that you're trying so I think Somehow I'm not getting like, like, you know, rallied because they're also not all paid (laughs) in this and they're not all coming to me and like yelling at me because they saw me on set, like hustling and trying to make sure that, you know, they felt like they had a voice or they like their safety was being looked at, et cetera. Cause I'm like, guys, we can't, we can't take this lightly. Um, so I think speaking up and it can be really hard. And like I said, I, I had, I'm still dealing with this, but um, so I would say if that person d- it just doesn't care, probably best to leave that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, in a way I wish I did like call it, um, ne- you should never have to like put your own money into set. I-, I did, I got refunded, but I had to fight like again to make that happen. Be really trusting and careful in that situation. So that way you don't end up with like where I'm at, where I'm having now to like have to go to small claims 
to yeah. like figure that out, which you guys have the right to do. You don't need a lawyer. You have a crew deal memo. You have a contract mm-hmm. that holds, you know, yeah. make sure you sign. That's another thing. Make sure you sign that crew deal memo. You have a copy and you send your own invoice right after. Contracts, 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 contracts. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Every single industry, no matter what, have it in writing. Like that is mm-hmm. so, 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 so important. I yeah. mean, everything down to like, you know, um, uh, releases for talent likenesses, everything mm-hmm. needs Ugh. to be written down. If you expect it, have it written from the start. I can like th- vouch for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I can't express how thankful I am to um, have been able to work with literally the best crew on, on the company we keep, um, that I probably will ever work with in my life. Um, and now to know y'all and to be, uh, to be accepted as a complete novice on <laughs> deal, using vision for sync, of course. like I mean, obsessed with, I mean, even just like reading the script, I like saw, I like saw it, you know what I mean? Mm, like, yeah. it, like it was oh my such a great vision. I love the story. It's an important story as well. Like, honestly, I don't want to give any spoilers, obviously, but like, it's, it's got a message. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Before we let you go, will you just yeah. share with our listeners um, any social media websites, anything like that that you'd like to share for people to see you're working at a hold of you? Yeah, please. Thank you so much. Um, you can find me at Mandy Bartis Banyan. I know my last name sucks, but. Um... <laughs> it will be in the show notes, listeners. Don't worry. <laughs> Mandy M A N D Y. I won't say yeah, show notes for the listeners, please, for my last name, but at Mandy Bard Scanning on all platforms. Um, and if you're queer, please go check out um, or you're a queer ally, please go check out uh, Boy Band at B O I Band, Boy Band um, on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, that is my wife's incredible band that I also manage. And uh, they're, they're, they're going to be the next. They're going to be the next big thing, y'all. I'm telling you. It's oh, I happening. love that. Amazing. Well, thank you again, Mandy. This was awesome. And I'm excited to talk with you more the next time we can all get together. Definitely, you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Oh and thank God. you, everyone, for listening. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening to FemRegard Podcast. If you like what you hear, tune in every Friday for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals. We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and review. You can also join the Fem Fam on Patreon. For more on us, check us out at femregard.com. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 